Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the correct views. Sam, I be the Angie during political commentary for the media speaks. Things are a bit dungeonous today. Yeah, we're having electric issues in the studio, so it is what it is. Uh, you didn't tune in to see that. You tuned in to find out if you want an ounce of silver, and I'm going to do that. I'm not going to do it first, unfortunately, because I have a number of people here who are uh, not in the contest. So we will do it as the show progresses, I promise. Um, a lot of you are here for the DNC convention. Probably more of you are watching this now for that than the silver, so we're going to get to it. Reuters. On the raucous opening night, Democratic stars make a pitch for Clinton. And the funny thing is, Democrats come out in favor of... Like the PMRC, for instance, was a nightmare of censorship and uh, music degradation led by the Democrats, which at that time was Tipper Gore, Al Gore's uh, wife, ex-wife, whatever. I don't know. Did they ever get divorced? I don't remember. But um, they were uh, strong, strongly in favor of censorship, and they were Democrats. And years later, you have all these stars coming out in favor of the Democratic Party. It makes no sense to me. It's also like you always have uh, blacks supporting the Democrat Party when it was the, the Republicans that led uh, for uh, the end of segregation. Well, this was interesting because I think a lot of the Bernie fans, even though I personally am not, are waking up to this reality here. Uh, the Democratic Party's deep divisions were on full display on a ruckus first day of its convention on Monday with Bernie Sanders portraying Hillary Clinton as a fellow soldier in his fight for economic equality, while his supporters booed the mere mention of his name. This would be like Abraham Lincoln espousing the virtues of John Wilkes Booth. There is absolutely nothing here that she is in favor of that has anything whatsoever to do with what Bernie was talking about. Um, as Trump highlighted in his speech, there are things that Bernie and Trump agree on economically that are not what Clinton, Clinton is wanting. So this idea that they are on the same page and party unity is a sellout on Bernie's part, and his people obviously see it. Um, by the end of the night, Sanders' liberal favorite U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren, also known as Pocahontas, we call her that because she lied about an Indian heritage to get money, and First Lady Michelle Obama offered stirring endorsements of Clinton as the party tried to push through the discord and find common ground. Hillary Clinton will make an outstanding president. Yeah, she made an outstanding uh, Secretary of Hate. Just ask Libya. And I'm proud to stand with her here tonight, Sanders said. Well, that is because Sanders has sold out. He should have left and ran a Green Party. And uh, don't give me this notion that the third party can't make a strong standing this time because they can. Uh, Gary Johnson, for instance, is polling 13%. That's not many. Yes, it is, because if he hits 15%, he'll be in the debates. That will be the first time there's been a third party in the debate since Ross Perot during Bush first and Clinton's run. And the big thing against Perot at the time was that he had no political experience. Well, that's not the case now with Johnson. Um, Johnson has been the two-term governor. So that should be really, really interesting. Actually, the only person here without political experience is actually Trump. So this would have been a good time for Bernie to have gotten into the uh, Green Party instead of Jill Stein. Instead, he sold out, and it's one of the reasons I told you don't trust Bernie. Uh, VOANews.com. Hey, our side does it too. Rand did it to his own father, don't forget. I like Rand, but we, we remember that. Uh, police union upset victims, not cops, widows, have voice at the DNC. Uh, basically, they've in invited the Black Lives Matter people there. Christelle sourced this one out. She found it from uh, VOA News. I don't think VOA News has been on the show before, so welcome aboard. Um, Black Lives Matter protesters will be there. They'll have a voice, but none of the police officers or anyone will have a voice. And I'm no great lover of police officers, but these idiots are shooting cops that haven't even done anything wrong. They're just standing there. 
Philadelphia's police union is con condemning Hillary Clinton for allowing relatives of people killed by police to speak at the Democratic National Convention without giving equal time to fallen to families of fallen officers. That doesn't surprise me because whether they whether they want to admit it or not, a large section of the people who are following Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party as a whole are people who are looking for immediate fixes to ongoing problems. They want things fixed immediately. And the, the best way to do that is to figure out an exact plan of attack. And if you have a problem with the way that the police are running, that is fine. I have had many problems with the way police have run over the years. But you don't just go shooting police officers standing on the corner. That's not going to immediately solve the problem you have. For instance, I'm a snowboarder, and I went snowboarding in a place where I shouldn't have even been, in a time that I shouldn't have been there, and got my car stuck in the snow. The cop spent a long time trying to, over a half hour, I would say, 15 minutes at least, trying to dig me out, and I, of course, never did get dug out. It was It's Ohio, it snowed, but he tried. Um, you can't paint with that big of a brush. They don't like it when... Uh, uh, by them, I mean the left don't like it when you say, well, all rappers are violent or, um, you know, all, all gay people do this, this or this. I'm not saying you should do that, but that's what they're doing then when they do it to certain police officers. Now, you can be against the institution. I don't have a problem with that either, but you can't go shooting people. It's, and a large number of the people supporting the Democratic Party are doing that. All right, guys, one more story, then we'll go ahead and do the uh, the winner here. Actually, actually, two stories. One more update, I should say. This is the global warming lie. Man-made global warming, of course, is a lie. The new American Philippines reject stupid UN climate deal. Globalists freak. More and more leaders are waking up to the fact that uh, global warming is all about one thing. It's about money and the transference of money and the further taxation of the United States. How is global warming a tax on the U.S.? Well, here's one way. Let's say you live in Britain, and Britain is the size of a postage stamp. And they agree, okay, we're going to go ahead and pay X amount of cents on every gallon. Well, over there it's liters, but you get my point. Every gallon of gas that we buy. And we don't have a problem with it, we'll pay it. And they pay it, not that much changes. But in America where the amount of driving necessity is necessitated is massive. You have uh, today, I, I, I went from Canton to Talmadge to Akron to Canton just to go to work. I routinely work in Brunswick. Uh, I'm not going to bore you to death, but those of you with a map can figure out what I'm talking about here. There are countries that have signed on to global warming taxes and that they pay to the UN that are the size of my state. And yet all of America is supposed to agree. That is the most ridiculous notion I have ever heard, for one thing. While well, more people are waking up to the fact that data proves that man has not been warming the planet, the planet has not warmed in over 15 years, and there is a ton of data to prove this to you with even the simplest Google search. So Google searches. Look up Lord Moncton, for instance. Well, this is Alex Newman. Internationalists and climate alarmists are freaking out over the new... I like the way this guy writes. Are freaking out after the new president of the Philippines, Firebrand, it's Rodrigo Durate, blasted the controversial United Nations climate regime and vowed to ignore its restrictions on his nation. Now there is full-blown global campaign to beat him into submission. Um, his explosive statements this week vowing not to honor what he called the UN stupid emission standards, which they are. He called uh, designed to stifle us, either, which is what they're designed for. And it sparked major concerns among pro-UN types. And that's why you're finding more and more people that aren't pro-UN. Um, I know Donald Trump is coming to mind, and uh, he's mentioned in the next paragraph. Indeed, Durati's comments follow similar statements from GOP presidential contender Donald Trump, which you can find there with the link. Another anti-establishment political leader who promised to cancel the UN deal upon taking office. That's one of the main reasons that we are voting for Trump, as a matter of fact, is that he wants to get us out of this. 
According to even notoriously unreliable polls, Trump, who has previously referred to global warming theory as a hoax, is basically tied with the pro-UN Democrat Hillary Clinton in the race for the White House. According to CNN, as of uh, yesterday, by the way, Clinton is ahead. That was what the Sunday news groups were saying. Uh, and, oh, excuse me, Trump is ahead for the first time in a CNN poll. I got that backwards. Uh, the Clinton News Network. Ironically, perhaps federal law now officially prohibits the U.S. government from funding the U.N. bureaucracy in charge of overseeing the climate regime and its international wealth redistribution scheme, which I just told you about. So even under a potential President Hillary Clinton, unless Congress changes the law, there will be no legal way to funnel U.S. taxpayer wealth into the U.N. regime, essentially killing the agreement. Well, that's it needs to be killed. Um, the ambassador told Filipino president that the previous government had agreed to the U.N. regime. Durante recalled speaking and unambiguously, that was not my signature, he pointed out. In other words, uh, the last president who agreed to this stupid idea. Someone else is not mine. Indeed, the leader had harsh words for the official. I'm mad at this ambassador, he said, blasting it as nonsense and demanded that CO2 emissions for his country. He would uh, Look, th this man has not warmed the planet. And if you want more proof of it, then we'll go to real science. And I promise I'm getting this over away after this. Realscience.com. Global temperatures are mostly fake, as in not real. Um, you know, yeah, that kind of fake. And, uh, NOAA, that's NOIA, claims global temperatures are the hottest ever, based on some rather spectacular junk science, which is exactly what global warming uh, theory is. NOAA doesn't actually have any temperature data over most of the land surface of the Earth. They never had any data for most of the southern hemisphere. hemisphere. This is from the New York Times, Thursday, 1978. So into our little time machine here. An internal team of specialists has concluded from eight indexes of climate that there is no end in sight to the cooling trend in the last 30 years. In 1978, there, there was no end in sight to the cooling trend. Now they're saying there's no end in sight to the warming. The report prepared, so I guess no end means 30 years. The report it was prepared by German, Japanese, and American specialists at that time. It appears in the December 15th issue of Nature, the British Journal. The findings indicate that from 1950 to 1975, the cooling per decade of most climate indexes in the Northern Hemisphere was 0.01 to 0.1 to 0.2. So um, that we were all going to be heading to an ice age. This is the important part. That's why they have it highlighted. Data from the Southern Hemisphere particularly south latitude south of latitude 30 south are no meager or so meager that reliable conclusions are not possible the report says and they made up much of the southern hemisphere ocean data and this is from 2009 the issue ray alludes to is that in addition to the issue of many more drifters providing measurements over the last five to ten years the measurements are coming in from places where we didn't have any ship data in the past. For much of the southern hemisphere between 40 and 60 south, our normals are mostly made up. Get that? Mostly made up as there is very little ship data there. It is in their own words. It is not a conspiracy. It is not made up. The U.S. has NOAA's best data, and almost half of it is fake by their own admission. This date in 1934 may have been the hottest in history. The map below, it's a, it's a the, the temperature data there, shows the actual temperatures, not the heat index. Almost two-thirds of the U.S. was over 100 degrees Fahrenheit on July 1st, 1934, with temperatures 115 in Missouri and South Dakota and 113 in Minnesota. But we're warmer now than we ever were before. No, I was very hot in Ohio today. It was not 115 degrees. Also, 1934, we had not had, we had 
factories, obviously, but they would not have warmed the planet in the brief time that they existed. More proof of lies. Like, we have Pinocchios here coming up the ass. The U.S. has much less hot weather than it used to. No serious scientist would make claims based on fake data, which is why NOAA does it. Their climate people are propagandists and not scientists. Friends, that brings us to what you're waiting for. This is brought to you by the Seacrest Motel. The whole contest, in fact, has been brought to you by the Seacrest Motel. <laughs> what we're doing, if you didn't know, the show was denied a uh, an independent media pass for the RNC. And if you supported the show by tweeting Arinis Priebus and asking him why the correct views was not invited, then we were giving away an ounce of silver and i'm going to give that away now let me show you real quick your screen share seacrest motel they're the ones who brought you the contest they're the ones who support the show and it could make it possible for us to afford to do things like that so even if you don't stay at the seacrest call the seacrest motel and say hey thanks for supporting sam's show that's awesome all right now we got a hat here it's not just any hat but it's a new england patriots hat Yes, it's true. The Great Patriots. And I don't wear it because I shrunk it when my ex tried to wash it. Actually, she shrunk it. So let's get the hat in here. We got the names in it. I'm turning my head, swooshing, 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 and pulling out the winner, which is 10. Who is 10? Christella, behind the scenes queen. Giselle. Giselle. That is great. Giselle, you have won an ounce of silver. <laughs> she was the fourth name in number There 10. you go. Now, see, it's funny because some shows don't offer the contest open to people that they know. That doesn't make any sense at all because as the show grows, you know more and more people. So why don't you, if Rush Limbaugh did that, he'd never have a contest. So Giselle, way to go. Kick ass. Um, She's an ounce of silver richer. And after the Brexit, uh, that's like 17 or 18 bucks. All right, friends, Yahoo News, as I uh, make my listeners richer, at least attempt to do so. Um, am I giving away an ounce of gold? Uh, no, but I'd like to. Hungary's Orban says obvious connection between terrorism and migration. This is another thing like the global warming story that we just had, where there are like cer certain things you just don't say. You don't call global warming a lie. You just keep paying like an idiot. Um, you're not supposed to say, hey, you know, if a lot, let's say a lot of white people move into your neighborhood, an army of white people move into your neighborhood and they look like me, what are you going to think? All right. There's probably going to be a lot of kind of headbanger-ish music going on. Um, if you knew anything about the particular t-shirt I was wearing, you would think, oh, he likes classic rock. I also like industrial music, as this t-shirt does not currently say. Love it. You wouldn't be surprised. Banging, clanging, jing, 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 jing. I could see that. Maybe some raves, yeah. Um, probably some pot smoke. You've got long hair, uh, the whole neighborhood full of people. Um, white people, so they're probably Christians or uh, at least uh, atheists. They're probably not Buddhists or Hindus or something. If a lot of black people move into your neighborhood. There's probably going to be a lot of vocal running in the music. RB, hip-hop would not be unusual. Um, bass is probably going to be throbbing from car stereos in your neighborhood. We know these things. Are we always right? No. The best guitar player I ever worked with was Black. He played like Steve Vai. No, it doesn't always work. But you're not supposed to say, if you bring in a lot of Muslims there's a chance that many of them might hate us even though there are websites that proclaim that many of them hate us therefore the goal is to bring the people into your country that don't hate you does that mean no muslims no it means making sure you have the muslims in that don't hate you not that hard warsaw hungary's prime minister Viktor orban said on thursday that there was a clear link between illegal immigration, illegal immigration to Europe and terrorist attacks on the continent. That's because people are sneaking in illegally to bomb your country because they usually don't let you in to bomb the country openly. It's, I don't think it's a practice anywhere as far as I know. It is clear as two and two makes four. It's as plain as day 
there is an obvious connection, Orbit told reporters after a meeting on the Visegrad 4 group and the Central European leaders in Warsaw. If somebody denies this connection, and in fact, this person harms the safety of European citizens, he said through an interpreter, and he's right. Uh, one more on this, uh, Christelle found this too, NPR, dozens killed in attack on protest march of minority Hazara community in Kabul. Now, again, I am, I, Sam hates brown-skinned people. I'm sticking up for the brown-skinned people that were slaughtered. I don't hate brown-skinned people. I hate murderers, even if they're white. And I guess it's, it's true. I, Christelle, would you feel better if you got killed by a white person and a brown person? I would feel just as horrible. Like, I'm dead. Dead. So See how simple this is? I wouldn't is? feel anything. But. An attack on the protest march by Afghanistan minority Hazar community in Kabul has killed dozens of people. And that's uh, over 12 for you Usher fans. Uh, Afghan authorities said that at least 80 people were killed and 231 were injured in the attack, according to the Associated Depressed and Reuters. Uh, the Islamic State claimed responsibility for the attack through al Iraq <coughs> News Agency. Uh, the purported claim was reported by Site Intelligence Group. So they, they are, they're saying, you know, these people are bombing us all over the place, but you shouldn't ever say there could be a chance between a uh, 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 connection between terrorism and these attacks, even though the terrorists are saying clearly that there is. And if that wasn't dumb enough, we got the dumb D, dumb D of the day. Um, this is self-explanatory here. I'm not going to go ahead and uh, and. I, I, this didn't win the dunce cap of the month because I don't know who it is. If I knew who it was, it would won. win. I'm going to screen share, and what you're going to see is a communist setting the flag on fire and himself. Enjoy, friends. Uh, this has been brought to you by The Correct Views. Uh, you can find me at The Correct Views as this plays on here at Hotmail.com. Any money you donate to the show, it goes towards a better show. As you can see here, also on screen share, if you go to GoFundMe and you hurry, if we can get some funding, uh, we'll cover the rest of the uh, DNC for you. Um, share, friends. Uh, let the Seacrest Motel, as you watch this idiot set himself on fire on accident, uh, tell the Seacrest Motel when you go to Cedar Point that you appreciate that they sponsor the show. If you're not going to go, tell them you appreciate it anyway. Uh, go to Sticker Junkie. Let them know. Hey, I'm, I'm supporting you because you guys not only make amazing stickers, but you support the correct views. Let the show sponsors know. That is a huge help. And um, again, I'm doing a bit of a show plug here as you look at the idiot set himself on fire because it's got to be done, friends. I'm trying to do this on a uh, more reliable, more frequent level. And to do so, there needs to be funding from somewhere. And if I go to a lot of corporate sponsors, they're going to greatly censor what the show does. That means it is up to you to uh, continue me having me do what I do. And I'm a poet and didn't know it. And thank you, friends. Good night. God bless. And a hit share.